Here we have a more complex example than the previous ones we have solved, but of course the process is exactly the same. The first step, as always, is to draw the free body diagram, and to do so, I have to substitute the supports with the reactions. Here you can see the results, but of course we will be calculating them ourselves. So this is R A Y, and this is R A X because I have a pin support, so I have two uh, perpendicular uh, forces uh, as reactions. I also have R E Y, which is vertical because the roller is vertical as well. Before I calculate the support reactions, I need to calculate the resultant force of any UDL, and I see that I do have a UDL over here, and also in the case that I have an inclined load, uh, I also need to analyze the inclined load uh, in two perpendicular components, one in my horizontal direction and one in my vertical direction. So, in this case, I only have to calculate the resultant of DE. It is a rectangular uniformly distributed load, so the resultant will be a force directly in the mid span over which the UDL applies. So, it is one meter, so the distance from both ends for the resultant will be 0 0.5 meters. The magnitude of the resultant is the area of the shape of the UDL. It is a rectangular one, so it is 4 times 1. That is 4 kilonewtons. At this point, I have drawn my free body diagram and I am ready to use it to calculate the support reactions. Typically, I start with a sum of moments about one of the points of the reactions so that I can calculate directly the support reaction at the other end. For example, if I take the sum of moments about point A, which has to be equal to zero, and I assume that the counterclockwise moments are positive, what I will get here is that, well, these two have no moment, so the 2 kN force tends to rotate it clockwise, it means that this is a negative moment, minus 2 times the distance between A and B, so 1 meter, and this is because this is the perpendicular distance to the load. Similarly, it's minus 5 times 2 meters, because it's AC now. For the resultant, it is the same, the distance now is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.5, it's 3.5 meters, so minus 4 times 3.5, plus R E Y times 4 meters. And all of them have to sum up to 0, so if I solve for R E Y, I will get R E Y is 26 over 4 or R E Y equals 6.5 kilonewtons. As I said, it is already shown in the figure, but we have to calculate that. Now, if in an um, example or perhaps uh, in a test question, these are given to you, then you don't have to calculate them. Typically, they would not be given. Uh, let's go to the sum of forces in y direction, which also has to be equal to zero. I will assume that the ones pointing upwards are positive, so r a y minus 2 minus 5 minus 4 
plus Rey, which is 6.5 equals 0, or Ray equals 4.5 kilonewtons. Finally, I will take the sum of forces in x direction, which has to be equal to 0. I only have Rax, so the ones pointing to the left, to the right, are the positive ones. Rax has to be equal to 0. And that's all with the support reactions. Now, at this point, I am ready to start calculating internal forces at all points of interest. However, I have not defined the points of interest, so let's do it now. One point of interest is a bit to the right from point A because it is the left end of the beam. Another point of interest is a bit to the left from point E because it is the right end of the beam. I see a point load over here, so I have a point of interest on its left and another one on its right. The point of interest of course is B, but I will perform two sections over here. It's the same with point C, it is also a point of interest because I have a point load, so I will perform two more sections, one to the left and one to the right of C. Uh, I just want to repeat here that I perform two sections because it is not possible mathematically to define uh, the values of the internal forces directly on these points. Now, here I have a UDL. Uh, I cannot stress this out uh, enough that you should not confuse the resultant force with the actual load. You have a UDL, so the point of interest is here, which is the beginning of the load or the left end of the UDL, and of course at point E, where I already have a section, it is the same point of interest uh, due to the UDL and due to the geometry of the beam, so since they coincide, it is fine with me. So, as you can see over here, I will need to perform seven sections across the beam uh, in order to calculate the internal forces. The first section will be a bit to the right from point A. So I will draw the free body diagram. This is an A. This is SA, this is MA. Do not forget to draw the support reaction, which is 4.5 kilonewtons. And we have seen that the horizontal one is zero, so we don't have to draw it at all. Now, as I had mentioned in previous examples, if you draw the support reactions in the same direction with the internal forces, you already know the internal forces. We will see this in this example. Of course, if it is a test question, then you can just directly say that uh, the internal forces are equal to the support reactions, and this would be correct. Nevertheless, let's go over here and apply the equations of equilibrium. The sum of forces in x direction has to be equal to zero, so Na has to be equal to zero. The sum of forces in y direction has to be equal to zero. So SA minus 4.5 has to be equal to zero or SA has to be 4.5 kilonewtons. Finally, the sum of moments about point A has to be equal to zero. We can just say that this is point A. Well, everything over here is point A. I see that MA is a counterclockwise moment, so I choose this direction as positive. So MA has to be equal to zero because 
I have no distance between these forces and point A. Everything is on point A, so only the moment applies over there. The next section will be a bit to the left from B. So if I draw the free body diagram, these are the internal forces that will substitute the right part of the beam. This is NBL and B left. This is MBL and this is SBL. I also have the support reaction, which is 4.5 kilonewtons. And of course, now I do have a distance between the two points. This is point A and of course, this is point B. The distance here is one meter. So, once again, the sum of forces in x direction has to be equal to zero. So, NBL must be zero. The sum of forces in y direction has to be equal to zero. So, SBL minus 4.5 has to be equal to 0 or SBL equals 4.5 kilonewtons. And the sum of moments about point B has to be equal to 0. You could take a sum of moments about any other point, but let's not make it more confusing. As I said, it should give you the same result. Um, however, it is common practice to take it about the point of the section. So, MBL, which is counterclockwise, so it is positive here, minus 4.5 times 1 has to be equal to 0, or MBL must be 4.5 kilonewton meters. The next section will be a bit to the right from B. I have already performed these sections over here. So, section a bit to the right from B. And as we mentioned in previous examples, because the only thing that changes is the vertical load over here, we expect to see a change in the shears only. For this example, I will do this analytically, so I will show the whole working. But of course, if you want in a test question, you can just calculate the shears and the, that would be correct. So, once again, it's the same free body diagram, but the only difference over here is that I do have this load on point P, which is 2 kilonewtons. This is point P, this is point A. The distance is 1 meter. Now this is SB right or, or SPR. This is NBR and this is MBR. So if I take the sum of forces in x direction, which has to be equal to zero, I will see that NBR is zero. If I take the sum of forces in y direction, which also has to be equal to zero, I can see that SBR minus 4.5 now you can see plus 2, so this is the only difference, equals 0, or SBR equals 2.5 kilonewtons.
And of course, the sum of moments about point B has to be equal to zero. Let the counterclockwise be positive. So MBR minus 4.5 times 1. And the new load has no distance, so its moment is zero. So the whole system over here is zero, or MBR equals 4.5 kilonewton meters. So as you can see, the axial force and the bending moment are exactly the same. The only difference comes in the calculation of the shear force. So now, what I need to do is to continue, of course, with the sections and go to the left of point C. So, section a bit to the left from C. Now, let's continue keeping the left part of the beam and substituting the right part with the internal forces, for now at least. Even if you would keep the right part and substitute the left part, the result should be exactly the same. So, uh, any approach is certainly acceptable and correct, provided, of course, that it has been worked out correctly. So, here we have the 2 kN force, the 4.5 kN force, the distances now are 1 meter each, point A here, point B here, point C here. So, if I get the sum of forces in x direction, which has to be equal to 0, this is NCL, SCL and MCL. I can say that NCL is zero. Also, I can get the sum of forces in y direction now, which has to be equal to zero. So SCL minus 4.5 minus 2 must be zero or SCL must be 2.5 kilonewtons. Finally, I can get the sum of moments about point C, which has to be equal to zero. So MCL minus 4.5 times 2 meters because it is a clockwise moment and the distance between A and C is 2 meters. Now I also have the 2 kN force, which creates a counterclockwise moment, so it is a positive 1 plus 2 times 1, has to be equal to 0, or MCL equals 7 kN meters. Now I have to perform a section a bit to the right from point C. I have already done the previous ones. As you can see here, it might be easier to keep the right part of the beam and substitute the left part with the internal forces. However, uh, I will keep the left part so that we can see again that only the shear forces will change compared to the previous section. So, let me draw the free body diagram for our section. This will be NCR, this will be SCR, this will be MCR. Now I do have the 5 kN force over here, and the rest remains the same.
this is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. So if I start with the sum of forces in x direction, which has to be equal to 0, I can see that NCR must be 0. Then I go to the sum of forces in y direction, which also has to be equal to 0. And here we will see that now we have a CR, which is positive, minus 4.5, because it points upwards, plus 2, and now the only difference is the 5 kN force, so plus 5 equals 0, so SCR equals minus 2.5 kN. Finally, I get the sum of moments about point C, which has to be equal to 0. So, MCR, it's a counterclockwise, and I assume that the counterclockwise are positive, minus 4.5 times 2 meters, plus 2 kilonewtons times 1, and now the new force doesn't create any moment, so all of that has to be equal to 0, or MCR has to be equal to 7 kN meters. So as you can see, only the shear forces have changed. I can perform another section over here at point D. I have already done the previous ones. Now here it is quite clear that it is easier to keep the right part. Now this section will also be on point D. It doesn't have to be a bit to the right or a bit to the left because I have a uniformly distributed load. So it is possible to calculate the internal forces over there. As I said, I will keep the right part of the beam, so this will be ND, this will be SD, and this will be MD. Do not forget the support reaction, this is 6.5 kN here. This is 1 meter. And of course, here we have the UDL. Now, again, I will uh, substitute the UDL with its resultant. I had already calculated the resultant. It is 4, 4 kilonewtons. And of course, it is in the mid span, so 0 0.5 meters and 0 0.5 meters. And now I can apply the equations of equilibrium. So the sum of forces in x direction has to be equal to 0. This means that nd equals 0. The sum of forces in y direction has to be equal to 0. So sd minus 4 plus 6.5 equals 0. Or SD equals negative 2.5 kilonewtons. And of course, the sum of moments about point D, which is this point over here, has to be equal to zero. Let's start with the unknown moment, MD. It is clockwise, and I assume that the clockwise moments are positive. Plus 4 times 0 0.5 minus 6.5 times 1 equals 0. So MD equals 4.5 kilonewton meters. Finally, I need to perform a section a bit to the left from C. All 
Of course, it is more convenient to keep the right part and substitute the left part. This is 6.5 kilonewtons. This is point E. These are the internal forces and E, S, E and M, E. So if I get the sum of forces in X direction, which has to be equal to zero, I will see that N E equals zero. If I get the, well, let me get the sum of moments here about point E, which has to be equal to zero. The only moment I've got is M E. So it makes sense that it has to be equal to zero. Everything else has zero distance, so it also has zero moment. And of course, if I calculate the sum of forces about point, well, sorry, uh, in y direction, it has to be equal to zero. So here, S E plus 6.5 equals zero. So S E must be negative 6.5 kilonewtons. Now, at this point, I am ready to draw the internal forces diagrams because I have calculated all internal forces at the points of interest. So, here I will be drawing the bending moments. Here will be the shear forces. And let's say over here, the axial forces. So, M, S, N. Now, uh, keep in mind that since we have values, so we also have units, you should not forget the units. Just write them next to the uh, titles of the graphs. So this implies that the whole graph over here uh, has used these units. Now, as always, let me remind you, you don't have to show that uh, when you are working on uh, perhaps a test question. But uh, we draw the positive pending moments below the axis. And of course, the axis is practically the beam itself. Um, while for the shears and the axial forces, it's the other way around. Now, something that we can do already. Uh, we noticed that in all of our calculations, the axial forces were zero. So it is safe to assume that it will be zero uh, throughout the beam. As we can see in the uh, figure over here, there is no horizontal force or perhaps uh, a horizontal uniformly distributed load. So at no point would I expect to have any axial force. Now let's go to the moments. The moment at uh, point A was zero over here. The moment at uh, point B was 4.5 kilonewton meter. This is the point over here. 4.5. Now, the moment at the point, well, it's the same uh, on the left and on the right side of B. Um, so I can go directly to C. The moment at point C is 7 kilonewton meters. So C is somewhere over here and is 7 kilonewton meters. Uh, the moment at point D now uh, is 4.5 kilonewton meters. So this one was 
4.5 and the moment at E is 0. Now, at the part of the beam where I only have uh, point loads, I can just connect all the points with straight lines. So it will look something like that. But here, that I have a UDL, it will be a curved line. Let me just draw the straight line dust. And now, because the load points downwards, this one should be sagging, something like that. As I have mentioned, it is possible to uh, calculate some values over here, but in this case you don't have to. This graph should be sufficient. So the only thing you need to add is the sign of the moments. So in this whole graph they are positive. And this is our bending moment diagram. Let's do the same for the shears. Of course, the shears will change uh, before and after a point load has applied uh, on the beam. So let's see how uh, it uh, works out. So at point A, the shear force is 4.5 kilonewtons. So let me draw this like that. Uh, left from point B, the shear force is still 4.5, so I can go directly and connect it with a straight line because I only have point loads and a UDL here, so in the whole beam I will just be connecting the points with a straight line. This is 4.5. Now, a bit to the right from point B, the shear is 2.5, so it's a bit less, perhaps somewhere over here. So this is 4.5, this would be 2.5. Now, a bit to the left from C, it's still 2.5, which I would expect because there is nothing uh, in between the two points. And a bit right from point C, well, a bit left it's 2.5, a bit right it's negative 2.5. At point D, it is still minus 2.5. It's like that. And at S, at um, point E, it is minus 6.5, so it's perhaps somewhere over here. Now, still, I just connect the two points with a straight line, and what this shows is that while the UDL applies on the beam, the shear gradually uh, increases in magnitude. Uh, of course, it is a negative one. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the effect is uh, the same in our structures, even if it's positive or negative. Um, but it is important to know when it is uh, alternating. Now, I just show which part is positive and which part of the graph is negative, and this will be all with that. At this point, I would uh, like to discuss something uh, regarding this example first, but then uh, we can generalize that. Now, here, first of all, if you remember, we have discussed that the shears are the derivative of the bending moments, which means that when the shears are positive, the bending moments will be increasing. And we can see that if we compare the two graphs. So this graph here for the moment uh, has an increasing slope, a positive slope, 
it makes it makes sense. Now we can see that when the shear becomes smaller but still positive, the bending moment increases but with a slower rate, which is very very logical. This is how it should work. Now at point C it becomes negative and we can see that it starts decreasing at point C. Now because the absolute value is exactly the same as previously, it decreases with the same rate and this is why we have the same value at points B and D. It just happens to be the case uh, in this example. Now at some point it becomes much more negative and we can see that it keeps decreasing with a much faster rate as we can see over here. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you because this is something that you can use in order to assess your working. Now, if there is an inconsistency between these two, for example, if you have positive shears and uh, decreasing moment, not necessarily negative or positive, but decreasing, uh, then there is probably something wrong with the calculations. Um, or if the rate of increasing or decreasing is strange, for example, the moments increase very fast uh, while the shear has reduced a lot, then perhaps there is something wrong with uh, your working. The second point I would like to discuss is the fact that if you check the shear forces diagram, you will see that the uh, change in the shear at every point where it changes is equal to the point load that applies over there. And not just that, but also you will see, for example, over here at point A, that the shear increases. Let me just draw uh, this with an arrow. So this, let me call it this jump in the uh, diagram is equal to the force that applies on point A. At point B, we have a 2 kN force downwards, so the change here is 4.5 minus 2.5. It is indeed 2 kN downwards. Here again, the change is 2.5 minus the minus 2.5, so it is 5 kN. Once again, the load. Now, from here to here, the change is from minus 2.5 to minus 6.5, so it is uh, 4 kilonewtons, which is the resultant of the UDL. The resultant, if you remember, was a 4 kilonewton, which we applied in the middle, but we know that it is a UDL. So, once again, now the change here, because it is a gradual one, it's not a jump, is equal to the resultant. This means that it is possible to construct the shear forces diagram very easily. Uh, now, actually, I have to say that you can also see that the reaction at point E is equal to the jump here so that the diagram closes. It's a very, very useful observation because you can use that to draw the diagrams uh, fast. In other words, noticing here that the axial forces should be zero because there is nothing in the horizontal direction and doing that for the shear forces, you could have worked out this example much faster than uh, what we did uh, in this case. When it comes to the bending moments, it will require some calculations but it is certainly much, much easier. If you have already constructed the shear forces diagram, the change in the moment is the area under the diagram. So at point A, of course, it starts with zero because there is no moment over there. But then at point B, the moment will be 
times 1 meter, so it will be 4.5 kilonewton meters. At point B, we will also need to add 2.5 times 1, so 4.5 plus 2.5, it is 7 kilonewton meters. At point C, we will need to add minus 2.5 times 1, so it will be 7 minus 2.5, 4.5. And at point E, we will need to add the area of this trapezoid, which, as you might imagine, it will be 4.5 kilonewton meters. So it is much, much easier to do that fast if you want, and it is possible. Whether or not you can do that in a test depends on the definition in the equations. Uh, if you are allowed to do that uh, this way, then it's great. If you are not allowed to do that, so you have to do that analytically, uh, the way that we worked this example, then you can certainly do that so that you know what your target is, so that you can assess your results at every step, at every step you could assess your results.